Hello STEM enthusiasts and welcome back to Scientix TV. The brain is rested, the tan is golden, and it's time to get back to STEM education. Are you ready? Make sure to connect with Scientix on social media and to subscribe to our Scientix Digest to stay in the know. Today on the agenda, we learn about digital cultural heritage, we talk decommissioning a nuclear power plant, and an education expert sheds some light on Copilot, the free AI companion from Microsoft. Of course, we will join Guillermo for Science in Action, where we discover simple science demonstrations to do in class or at home using household items. This week, Guillermo makes colorful art using science. What brings together history, culture, and science? If you're unsure, well, fear not. Scientix is here to the rescue. Let's discover Europeana, an initiative that works to promote Europe's digital cultural heritage to be used and enjoyed by everyone for learning, for work, or just for fun. Elizabeth Blaho from European Schoolnet, leading our work on the project, tells us about the initiative before calling on a teacher to introduce a Europeana learning scenario. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you, Agueda. Uh, so, we are talking about the deployment of a common European data space for cultural heritage, or shortly, Europeana project, through which we aim to involve educators to use high quality data and engage them uh, into incorporating uh, digital cultural heritage in their professional practice. So a few things about this kind of uh, heritage. We are talking about administrative, scientific, other types of resources created digitally or converted into digital format from an analog one. So within this project, we give the tools and resources uh, that educators need to incorporate this type of heritage into their professional practice. So, uh, first, educators can find millions of uh, items of digital cultural heritage on the Europeana platform. We're talking about items like pictures, videos, or 3D materials that they can find on the platform with open licenses, and they can easily uh, use them in their practices. Secondly, we have the Teaching with Europeana blog. Over there, uh, educators and all interested stakeholders can find numerous learning resources, such as learning scenarios, that are ready to be used. And these uh, resources showcase how digital cultural heritage can be integrated into an educational setting. We had a teacher a few weeks ago here in FCL, Simone from Italy, and he describes how he would use a European learning scenario in his own educational context. The scenario is called Nuclear Power Plant Mission. Let's have a look at it. Hello to everyone, I'm Simone from Italy and I teach mechanics, mechatronics and energy in a technical institute. Uh, have you ever wondered how to turn off a nuclear power plant? Well, to know this answer, you have to go to an actual plant and ask to the people living there. But if you want to give this question to your student in a new learning scenario, you can just go to Europeana, which is uh, an online platform where you can find lessons uh, from teachers from all over Europe, and you can use them. One of these that I'm using in my current uh, lessons, it is called uh, Nuclear Power Plant Mission. And the aim is to engage your students with quizzes and uh, energy balances and uh, new teaching methods to uh, finally turn off a nuclear power plant. What is very interesting is that you can divide your uh, class into small groups and let them compete together and uh, then find, find the best one. On Europeana, you can find uh, uh, other lessons regarding several topics, not only technical ones, and ensure that if you go there and just browse through all the learning scenarios, you will find something very interesting for you. So hopefully see you there. Bye bye. Thank you, Elisabeth and Simone for those insights on Europe's finest collection of digital cultural artifacts. Teachers can discover the learning scenarios presented today and many more, along with hundreds of collections and stories on www.europeana.eu. 
The STEM Alliance is powered by Scientix and offers the space for educators and industry partners to collaborate and enhance the use of technology in the classroom. One such technological tools comes from Microsoft, our long-standing STEM Alliance partner. We welcome Ovi Barceló, a solution specialist for Modern Classroom, who tells us about Copilot, Microsoft's AI companion. Hi, Ovi, and thank you for joining us. So what is Copilot? So Copilot is the AI for Microsoft. Uh, it is uh, the way we implement AI for our customers to work better, work smarter, and we're integrating Copilot in all our products. And how can teachers benefit from using Copilot? This is Copilot. As you can see, it's your everyday companion. Uh, it's on the web. It's accessible via copilot.microsoft.com. And it's like a, every other uh, chat or uh, LLM. So you can start typing things here. So I have prepared a prompt here. So you just need to uh, paste the prompt here. And, and the prompt needs to be very concrete. So meaning like, what do you want? Who are you? What are the resources uh, meant to? And, and then you ask Copilot. And the first thing that Copilot comes back is, okay, what do you want to teach? What grade are your students? And maybe we can say we can, I want to teach about uh, synonyms and my students are second graders. Do your students already have some knowledge about synonyms? Say they do some knowledge. Okay, no, they are new. Okay, so now, um, even if I'm making typos, Copilot understand as a natural language, LLM. Okay, so then that last question, um, what is your learning goal? So let's put the basic understanding. And then, boom, here we go. Now creates a whole lesson plan for me according to my specific needs. Because as you, as you have seen, I'm interacting with, uh, with the model. The good thing is that it's, it's also, as, as we said at the beginning, is part of the Microsoft suite. So whenever it finishes, and, and you will see uh, in a minute, you can, uh, you don't need to copy and paste this anywhere. So because you can or read it out loud or copy it or even export it. So if I export it to a Word document, then in my own um, uh, student environment, in my own education environment, the answer is now transformed into a Word document so I can edit it uh, perfectly. But not only Word documents, imagine that I want to do something like make a rubric in a table for evaluating and this lesson. That also creates tables in this case that uh, will be, uh, as you can see here already, you, you can export in Excel. We have also other features I want to highlight. This is the feature of notebook. Now I'm going to upload here an image. This is a pattern of the verbs in English. And without any training, it will understand that this is a mind map. It will understand that the, the center is the beginning and it, it will give you an answer perfect, perfectly adapted to your question. So in the, so I'm asking using this image, what examples is using to put for adjective plus two plus verb? It gives me exact text and understands my question based on an image that is not pretained for. But not only that, if you're using Edge, you see here a video that uh, is uh, in French in this case, but it's the video I like to explain fractions to my students. So in this case, I'm going to ask Copilot that using the video, give me the highlights of the video in English and make a questionnaire for me, for my students to use it. Here we go. I'm asking Copilot and Copilot, search for the video, give me the highlights, give me the summary in the language I'm interacting in. Here is the highlights in bullets perfectly marked with the time. And here is a multiple choice question that I have, I have already um, asked before. So ask how easy is to get resources. 
but not only for videos, but also for PDFs. PDFs are sometimes difficult to read or, or to, to understand because they have different formats. You cannot copy. And for example, in this case, I want to know, using this PDF, give me three bullets about Korea during the expansion period. So it's a lot of information here, tiny letters. I don't understand anything. And boom, understands the PDF, no matter what, how it is, and gives you the three bullets you are looking for. And the same with web pages. I have a, here a web page with a lot of information, and I want my students to have a summary. Here we go, make a summary of this web page in three bullets, helping my secondary students to prepare for an exam about rainforest. And there, there you have it. Thank you, Obi, for your views and for helping teachers navigate the complex world of AI. Make sure to check out Copilot and the other resources offered by Microsoft and our other industry partners via the STEM Alliance page on Scientix. Link is in the description. And now let's join Guillermo, who I'm told has something very colorful in store. Hi, Guillermo. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Science in Action. Summer may be over, but here at Scientix, we like to keep things colorful and lively. And that's why we have brought you this amazing experiment that you're going to love. Are you ready to learn and have fun in equal measure? Let's see what we need. For today's experiment, we are going to use some paper and a pair of scissors to cut the paper. We will need also a plate and a spoon, a bottle of shaving foam, be careful because it cannot be gel. We are also going to use a stick, preferably one that is rather thin, we will need some food coloring, at least two different colors. And we are going to use a dropper to pour the food coloring in drops. And for cleaning purposes, we are going to use some kitchen towels. First, we need to prepare the paper that we are going to use for the experiment. We have to fold the sheet just like that to mark the, the middle. And then we have to take the scissors and very carefully we cut the, the sheet in the middle. And then each one of the halves, we need to fold them again to make sure we have four different sides of paper that we can use for the experiment, just like that. The second step is to prepare the shaving foam. So we take our bottle and we shake it, shake it until everything's ready. And now we have to add it to the, to the plate we have to make sure to cover more or less the whole space that we are going to use. Just like that. You can make different bowls, just like I'm doing. Then we take the spoon and we have to even it out to form a layer. It doesn't have to be completely uniform. Just make sure that it is more or less the size of the paper that we are going to use. I think we're fine like that. Now is the moment to create our pattern. So we take the dropper and we just do like that. And we put some drops of color. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can clean the dropper after each use. Now, with our stick, we can start drawing our pattern. So we just have to do like movements in a random way, just la like that, for example. And we make sure to create a pattern. Like that is more than enough. You can also, if you have an idea in mind, try to recreate an image or something like that. Now is the moment to take the paper that we prepared, and we have to soak it in our ad work. You just have to use one of the sides like that and press gently a bit to make sure the, the pattern is well adhered. And we can see that it should be more than enough because the pattern is transparent in a bit. And then uh, by picking uh, from this side of the paper, we just lift it up gently and 
we can put the pattern in here. Now we have to remove the excess foam. So we pick the paper from one of the corners and we try to remove the foam just like that to reveal the pattern. And we have to continue until everything is more or less removed. And this is what we have created. It's really colorful and as you can see, you can create many different patterns and designs. The only limit is your imagination. And you just leave it in here for it to dry and then you're done with the experiment. Okay, and why this is happening? Well, shaving foam is made out of water and soap. Soap is a surfactant, a chemical compound which has both a hydrophilic end, which is receptive to water, and a hydrophobic end, which is resistant to water. On the other side, food coloring, it is just the pigment dissolved in the water, so it is hydrophilic. The reason why it stays on the surface of the foam is because when the drops are poured in the surface, they don't go deep because they are rejected by the first hydrophobic end that they encounter, and then they just get in contact with the hydrophilic end. And that's why we are able to transfer the colors into the paper, because paper is made out of cellulose, which is another hydrophilic molecule. You can also find surfactants in, for example, milk proteins and egg yolks, and that's why we can create products like, for example, ice cream, thanks to the emotion that it is created. At the end, ice cream is a kind of foam. Thank you, Guillermo, for this fun and creative use of science and shaving foam. I might steal the idea next time I babysit my nephew. And that's it for today. Rewatch this show and all the previous episodes on the Scientix portal. And remember to share your ideas for science experiments to use in the classroom. All links are in the description. See you next time for another episode of Scientix TV, the show where we take a look at the world through STEM glasses.